Hi there. In this episode, seller's remorse. Have you ever sold a piece of gear only to regret it? Sometimes it's instant regret. Sometimes it takes a while, but it still makes you feel badly. This is a top 11 list of items I regret selling or returning. At number 11, Yamaha DM2000. This is a digital mixing console. I was hoping to find some pictures I took that would give you a clue as to why I returned it, but I couldn't find them. I'll just say that it was delivered via freight in a massive road case and was half the size of a car parked in my driveway. I loved its functionality. The scribble strips, motorized faders, and it had a full complement of six expansion cards. Why did I sell it? It was simply too big for my studio. I have mixed feelings about returning it, but what's done is done. At number 10, the Dubrec Stylophone. I was nine or 10 years old when I got one and I took it everywhere with me. I'm not even sure what happened to it. When you're young, your parents often dispose of items without your knowledge, so that's probably what happened to it. I know there's a reissue version out there, but I don't miss it now. I have plenty of keyboards, though probably not enough. At number nine, Vox Organ. Here's a very embarrassing picture and that hairstyle has just got to go. An older gentleman who played guitar in a band I was in for about half a minute gave it to me. But it's not the band you see here in this picture. I don't really miss it. And I do know for a fact that when I left home back in the mid 80s, my mom sold a lot of stuff. And that's probably what happened to it. Number eight, Yamaha O2R96. After I returned the DM2000, I purchased this item. It would have been perfect, but the store packed it with the meter bridge still attached and it got destroyed. It didn't help that the delivery guy smacked it around a whole bunch. I supplied the security camera video footage from my house to the store to help them with their insurance recovery. I thought about trying to locate another one, but I ended up going with the O1V96i, which is a great little digital mixer, but doesn't have enough channels for me. Number seven, Casio RZ1. Here's a picture. I got this on a deal back in the 80s from Sam Ash. I think they may have been closing them out. I had a lot of fun with this drum machine, especially the sample pads. On the Chicago song, Stay the Night, there are isolated, big gated drum sound hits at the beginning. Actually, they're snare hits. And I used to sample them into the RZ1 and trigger the samples on a song. You have to remember, this was circa 1988. Now most of us have huge sample libraries, but this is what I did back in the day and I was sampling it from cassette. How things have changed with technology. Number six, Waldorf Micro Q. I actually own two of these units, a blue one and a yellow one. It's a really great sounding virtual synth. And even though I have the Kronos, other hardware synths and software synths, I often think about repurchasing one. Prices have really gone up in the last five years. I really do miss it. Number five, Yamaha TX81Z. This is a great little four operator FM rack mount synth. It's only eight voices. I have a DX7 to FD, a Kronos and FM8, but the TX81Z has a warm place in my heart and it does have additional waveforms on board. I wrote an Atari editor librarian program for it back in the 80s, which I sold through Keyboard Magazine so I could buy food and make my rent when I moved to Miami. At number four, no. slash Realistic MG1. This was the first synthesizer I ever owned, so it has a lot of sentimental value. It taught me the basics of synthesis. I purchased it used circa 1983, and I traded it in on a used SH-101. Which brings me to number three, Roland SH-101. Here's a picture of me with it in the band back in 1985. This was a substantial step up from the MG-1. Mine was a gray one with the Roland logoed beige guitar strap and a gray modulator grip. 
I sold it circa 1986 to a friend for $50. And then I believe we went out for fast food. And I think I paid, so my net gain might have only been $45. I can't believe they now go for anywhere between $1,500 and over $2,000. As I said in another episode, they are neither rare nor musically unique. If you go on Reverb right now, there are probably 30 for sale and there are probably another 20 more on eBay. I only have seller's remorse because of how valuable they are now. Number two, Akai AX80. I purchased this brand new in 1985. I've said in other episodes that the AX80 is dull, boring, lifeless, and everyone prefers the Juno 106. All you have to do is add effects to the AX80, and it is an awesome synth. I've also said that I think the AX80 is a better synth than the Juno 106, but I really should have said that it is at least as good as the 106. They both have their pluses and minuses. What really helped the 106 was that it had a chorus on board. I believe if Akai had included a chorus on the AX80, it might have sold just as well as the Juno 106. I used my AX80 in the band with a Roland Chorus guitar pedal. Now I have it hooked up through a dedicated rack effects processor, and it sounds great. I sold it circa 1996, and I repurchased another one about 15 years later. Number one. Korg Wavestation EX. My first exposure to the Korg Wavestation was when the guy to whom I'd sold the SH-101 was playing as a side musician for a named band. I believe they may have been sponsored by Korg, but I don't remember the details, so don't quote me. It was right when the Wavestation came out, probably circa 1989 or 1990. I don't think it was available at Ace Music in Miami when he showed it to me. And I was at Ace Music every Saturday lusting after keyboards. Once again, this was a long time ago and I'm fuzzy on the details. He was living in a tiny apartment in Miami and I remember going over there. He had it in his living room on a three-tier rack. It sounded like nothing I'd ever heard before. I wanted one so badly, but it cost more money than I took home in two months. So it faded from my memory for a while. But the sounds that it could make never faded. I finally purchased one used circa 2012. I can't figure out why it took me so long. I just love the wave station. So why did I sell it? Like most studio musicians, I go through periods of expansion and contraction. I purchased a wave station AD and I figured I didn't need two of the same unit, though I strongly believe that my rack gear gets less use than my keyboards. Ultimately, I missed it, so I repurchased another one. This time it was one of the originals, not the EX model, but all the sound blocks it doesn't have are in the AD, and I still have the AD. I'm really not gonna use the wave station for piano and drums anyway. Since then, I also purchased a wave station SR, and all the Wavestation sounds are programmed into my Kronos as it has all the original Wavestation wave sequences. That's it for this episode. Feel free to share seller's remorse stories you have in the comments. Hopefully I haven't wasted your time. Take care and I'll be back in another episode soon.